turn back where possible. So shut up. It's a new road. Right, tubers. On my way to a customer in Wakefield. No. I've only got a little 10 ton load on board, so uh, it's a quick one. But it's also a smelly one. So, basically the product I'm delivering is a compound used in the carpet production. Or production of carpets. To be honest, it's one of them days I've not got my teeth in. So, um, basically the smellier aspect of it is that this carpet compound contains ammonia. Now, as much as work have done my, uh, probably through my ADR, um, it's not really classed as a hazardous product. Prepare to turn right after half a mile. Because it is a majority of percentage that is I wouldn't, be like, I wouldn't like to say the percentage, but I'd say at least 86. It's 86 percent latex-based compound. So, you know, and it's like 0.6 percent ammonia in that. You can still smell it. Yeah. Probably akin to the degree of warning of an old frog so you know what I mean? That kind of smell. But, uh, <laughs> bless them. That's basically it. So, you know, the discretion is yours. You could wear. A, uh, After 300 yards, turn right. You could wear a mask. Must we haven't been working in production with the guys so, you know, filters out just particles but it also filters out smells. I've not got one because you know I mean I've worked after 30 yards turn right. Shut up. I've worked with this stuff for seven years. So come with it straight. So I'm used to the smell. Uh, you know, it's only occasionally that you get a book. So we'll be eating. So we are. After 200 yards, turn left. We are coming into. Wait for the sun. Make sure. I'm going to turn this annoying sun. Take the next left. Take a hint and shut up. We know we're we'll now. Sure do. I decided to just use my phone to film with today, so I am. Um, Got it. No, I would normally, if you're looking at the phone, I would normally film with the Samsung logo to the left. Now, from previous videos that I've edited, um, that way it comes up that your clip is upside down. So. Right this way and hopefully it's right. So I know it's two clicks of the orientation button. So what? So just, uh... I've just started this channel up so um, what I'm trying to do is just put a bit of footage together. Um, my 
good pal fast as fox on youtube if you haven't already heard of the gentleman the legend then he's got his own channel as well so just put your search bar fast as fox and he shall come up he's a good lad for a southerner <laughs> i'm only joking fox you know love you man so um no, he said to me, you know, nobody vlogs on tankers and stuff, so I'm just, a, you know, I'm not doing it to say I know everything. I've only been driving since last June, so I'll come up a year in the next few days. Um, you know, just a bit of footage just to say, right, this is how this works, this is how this works. For me, you know, not all tankers are the same, but all trucks are the same. So I'll just knock a bit of footage up, it's just, I just find a bit of fun really, because I enjoy doing it. Gives me uh, something to keep me out of mischief. And, you know, we're all here, we're all learning. know today we didn't necessarily know yesterday so every day is a school day and all the rest of it so I very much welcome new comments new advice new hints tips whatever so uh, by all means drop a comment like the video subscribe whatever else um, Bearing in mind, I'm just starting off here, so I'm by no means an expert on YouTube, I'm by no means the next Robert Zemeckis or whatever his name is. You know, it's just it's just a, a mess of it, really. So, uh, let's see how we get. Catch you in a bit. Panic peeps! <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm heading for that low bridge. I'm not. Gate A. Where is it? B. There we are, some other truckers in front of me. So I just had clearance on the gate man, on the gatehouse, just to pull on to the way bridge. We weigh ourselves, so we weigh the tank empty, the full setup, so that's unit, tanker, empty, weighed off empty, and then we pop round to the loading point, load it up, drive back round on the way bridge, weigh it off, and then you've got your net weight as the product. So that's what I'll do here. Bear with me a minute. Shut up. This is the killer. What you've got is the longest reverse in the world. So you'll see when you get on the corner, geez, it's got to be a fair few hundred yards. So it's coming into your view now, just past this driver. You'll see them yellow doors right up there, straight in front. But I'm going up there and beyond. So dog legs on the corner, it's a nightmare. It's 
Let's drive her up. Oh, you know what that is. So what we'll do is spin it around. So, enjoy the view for the next bit. And forgive me for being quiet because this takes a bit of concentration out of you. Time with it, little and often, somebody said, somewhere. Oh, so, the suspension at the back of the truck is jacked up. We have adjusted the levers horizontally to let all the air out, but the suspension on the trailer, on the tanker rather. So that is now lowered, pipe is on, and then we're into the storage tank with the product that it is, the smelly stuff. So as you can see, if I can get a, a good angle at it, that tanker is at a fair angle backwards, so this helps the stuff drain out. So now we've got to head up them stairs and up to the top of the tank have a look in the tank before we start offload should be empty because they never roll over unless it's unless it can fit in so we'll go head up there in a sec Four. Open your lid. Climb up the step. Or two. That is your stuff. Agitators on. Should be alright. I'll ask inside if they want that off before we start off loading. And trust me, if you can smell it. You realise it's not a very nice one. So then you go to the desk, to the chap, to see, to commence offloading. Confirm it or not. And this is what you'll find a lot of the time. Nobody there. Back to the stairs. your new Renaults, start her up. <laughs> now, here's your panel here. This, press that because you increase the engine revs just slightly. For some reason this truck won't let you engage the PTO if the revs are at idle. Don't know why. 
So. Basically, this is the compressor. That's your relief valve. Shut that. Open that. Follow it to the tank. Zero pressure there. Make sure this is shut. And then we start it up. Do that too often. So we press the PTO button. Voila. Currently running at 9,000 well, revs, which is the maximum it will put out. Here is your plate. It tells you what compressor it is, what relief valve, the bar pressure the relief valve is set at. So when it reaches two and a half bar, it will start pissing the air out elsewhere. Because it can't go anywhere else. And that's basically it. You can decrease the revs. Do here. But you need it quite up there to fill the void in the tank that isn't that is air basically. So you need to pressurize the tank and then it'll literally blow the shit out to where you want it. Behind the pressure gauge. Now this pipe does heat up after time because you've got friction running through there which is caused by the air traveling so fast so just be wary if you need to undo that unlikely but you'll need to undo that at the end so that will be hot, you need gloves on for that. So just keep an eye on the pressure, make sure it's building up a loom, normally get it to a bar and a half. Okay. You know, near enough 30 psi, 25 even. It just takes a while for that to build, so we'll pass it on in a bit. In the meantime, go back to the bolt tank. So both valves are open. If there's two, you need you need your line clear. So it's clear all the way, and it can run up there and in the top. Now, if you've got two pots on your tank so this is the front and that's the back this valve here operates that so upwards that's the back pot and horizontally that's the front now this bar because it's a pneumatic foot valve you just pump that Well, you feel a resistance don't push it much further than that because you will force the mechanism and the foot valve itself and then you've got problems you'll have to replace it soon just to keep us right that valve there or the lever rather if it's vertical it's for the back pot if it's horizontal for the front pot and that's where we're at so We'll check the pressure again. Coming up the 20 psi, just over one bar. We'll let it get the 25 psi and then we'll let it rip. It's only 10 ton, so it shouldn't take that lot. The force going with it. Pressure check, now we've been running maybe 4-5 or five minutes, so compressor on this is quite good, because it's a new truck. So, 
quite happy to let that fly. So once you open the valve and it starts blowing the shit into the tank, then you're, going, you're always going to get a bit of a slight drop. So we'll open the valve and get going. So at this point, you just want to double check all that's stopping the shit in the tank from getting to the storage tank is that valve there so check your line make sure your, your pipe is on solid check here for any wobbles before you even put this pipe on there's an o-ring inside seal check that's still in good nick otherwise you're just going to get leakage and then you've got a pipe full of shit and then you've got to change that so this is all open everything's piped up brilliant so what we'll do is, we'll open this valve and you'll hear it heading the way up so you just, you just crank it slightly at first and then you're checking fully, you just at either end, leave it, a, leave it a minute or so no leakage is there and I can see there's none at that end, so we're all right. Paramount that you check your seals inside these pipes. So, so we'll open that fully now. I'm happy that it ain't leaking. Check the pressure, see what it's dropped by. Won't be a lot, if anything. Because it's a new compressor, it tends to hold the uh, the pressure quite well. Because previous compressors have only run at something like 600, 650 RPM. This one runs at a thousand, so it maintains that that uh, that input quite well. Back up. Check that it's going in the tank. It should be. Can't be going anywhere else. So I've stopped the agitator. In there, see the stream, the product blowing in. And yeah, there is a faint whiff of the ammonia, but it's not too bad. The tank starts blowing. You'll know, but as it would just be high pressure air coming through there, you'll hear it. That's when the fumes start to get a bit difficult. So, because you're outdoors, you're in an open environment, you're not too bad. If it was confined space indoors where there wasn't sufficient ventilation, then you'd need a mask on for your own protection, really. This keeps those health and safety people off your back so as you can see the product's going in fine it's a matter of time so there's a bird's eye view of the job there's the tanker there's the choke and there's the pipe fixed to the loading point and all that shit is coming up that pipe under the top of the tank so from here you're all right you've got a good vantage point you can see whatever's going on down there which isn't a lot because everything's safe and everything's piped up nice and secure no leaks so it's just a waiting game really it's usually around half an hour you know, 20 minutes to half an hour it depends what pressure you've got in if you start off with two bar pressure let the pressure build up so you've really got a force behind it and when you crack that valve at the bottom it flies up flies up so you know that's i like to work at about a bar and a half it suits me fine so just keeps it nice and steady and then everything's all right it's another check 
Lift that off. Still flowing in, nice and steady. Tank's filling up. To put the agitator on in a bit, perhaps. Oh, the smells there, jeez. So your agitator's on. Still loading. Off loading. Well, this is exciting as it gets. Still waiting. Still watching. Still going. Still going. Enjoy the view. The view there is. Still alright. Still going. The best weather really is it, but you know. I don't know what that building is there. I don't know, it'll be interesting to find out. Well, Problem with ammonia, fuck me when it gets in your eyes, it gets in your eyes. Right, we've got to stop this blowing now. So, back here, lower the revs, don't just shut it off straight away. What's that one? Done. Knock that off. And then, we can unpipe it and off we go. That was in because some of these pipes can get heavy depending on how clean they're kept. Whatever. I'll leave the uh, I'll leave the suspension down. Start at the far side and work my way down, putting the pipe back on. So all we do is I can't do it uh, one-handed. So figure me a minute. Right. So pipes off this end. Put your end cap on. Uh, just a camera fitting. We do work with BSP, usually three inch is what we work to, so uh, so that's uh, sorted off. And it's just this side. Let's just climb the fence time. So, make sure your valves are shut. It's just something that's ingrained into my brain after seven years of working with valves and pumps and pressure and whatever. Just to make sure it's all done, and then you're off. So now, sometimes you can get away with it because it's not been running that long. But I'll shut that valve, you can hear the hiss. There's a bit of air backed up in there. Any kind of pressure you're working with, you hear that hiss. If you're starting to undo something, a bit of a quick one. Open the dumb valve, gone. And the needle return to zero there. Right? This is a, a non-return valve, so it should never go backwards. 
That is hot. I know this with one hand, by the way. Well, there's pressure coming up there still, but oh, Jesus. Still a property. Yeah. Glove on, much easier. So, I'll just usually shove that under there. Wedges it in. Shouldn't really go on there, but it's all right. So, open that and release the pressure because we've still got just under a bar 10 or so psi. And let that vent. Which point? I'm sorry, this before, but this. When a handle's erect like that, where that means the uh, the foot valve, the pneumatic hydraulic foot valve, still open. So you just open that. That releases the oil back into the chamber. So flip it up, back, back, and back. And that'll do. Tighten that up again because that can come all the way out, and you lose it. And that's that. To do spare parts of that, so this side's all done. It'll secure your hydraulic foot pump is shut. Just the one tank we did, but it connects both. Shove that in there. We don't like spillages. That's shut. Now we can put the pipe on. Come with. This is close to the wrong way around, isn't it? So, again, we'll hit these and get it in. Where are you? So, that's going to take whatever air out of the reserve. Right now, this bit, in my mind, is R&R. &R. There's one R&R &R that we all like which is no better than being horizontal on the bunk in the cab. Whether it's a delay or downtime, whatever. But RR is the other one, so road ready. So we've just checked that we've got the suspension. The, uh, the levers are back to vertical, and the back suspension will come up. As you notice, back suspension on the truck is still elevated, so... We'll turn that on. Get me magic buttons here. Self level. And voila. Now, 
things had to do. We shall get the old third axle up. Second, whatever order we wanted. Who cares? What's that? Shut down. I suppose you can still see the read zero on there. But as you can hear, it's still coming out. We cannot travel with pressure in the vessel. Mr. Vosa catches you. You get your bottom smacked. So our oh, oh, road ready, right? Back suspension's up. Truck suspension's level. Pipe secured safely. We have got the end cap on. Valves are shut. Pneumatic foot valve is shut. Check the walkway. Sides aren't up because we've not been up there, didn't need to be. I'm the one who washed the tank out and uh, secured the lids prior load and so I knew it was all right. Do a once round again, make sure everything's safe, locked down, everything as it should be before we head off. We're all done. <coughs> Security gate has signed that off. He wears me off when I go out. So, you know, as I've not got out left on, it's a case of job done. Rolling! Now, here's the next thing, right? Always trucks and stuff down here where they're constantly servicing fault lifts or dropping stuff off or whatever else. It is one of the most awful, awful reverses you have to do. So as you can see, a shite left, right and centre. There's two kinks. And it's bit of a distance. Let's see what happens here. Right, now he's buggering off. Draw it. Yeah. Sometimes you get sent back miles just to let somebody through, but you know, at the end of the day, it's blocked me right away. So, it's back on the way bridge, and then they can uh, wear me off.
sweet. The paperwork. No. They're off.